Okay, so there's one more generator to look at uh, before we move into the other sort of things you can add into the generator section, and that is the granular engine. Now, this is quite a new addition. They added it a few months ago, um, as of time of recording. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so it's quite new, um, but like hugely powerful. I, I've used various different sort of granular engines in since granular since and all kinds of other things over the years i think this is probably uh one of the they, they found a really good sweet spot between it being sort of um kind of easy to get very varied sounds and things out of it but it generally sounds good most of the time so even if you're uh, a bit of a novice or you're not quite sure what you're doing it's still quite easy to get it to sound good um, which is sometimes the issue with like granular stuff um, so essentially like the way that like a granular engine works is you kind of load like it's kind of a weird type of sampler almost in a way so you load like a sample into it some audio um, and then it like chops it up into grains which are like tiny little slices uh and then it does certain things to those grains. Um, so probably the easiest way to kind of show you what I mean is to show you what I mean and actually load a sample into it. So let's take our same uh, key sample that we had before and just drag and drop it onto here. Now, you can see that like it looks quite similar to the way the sampler looks, uh, but um, but we've only got like a, a sort of a certain portion of it that's actually like highlighted and then the rest is kind of grayed out. Now, uh, the reason for that is because this is sort of tied to these grain envelope settings and that's quite an important part of granular synthesis to understand is like each grain has like an envelope. So you're setting the length of the grain, but you're also setting does it like have a fade in or a fade out um, and then you can choose like how many grains you have playing simultaneously um, and and so you can sort of layer things up so it allows you to do things creatively which are quite interesting like you know taking a vocal which is just a single person but then turning it into like a sort of pad or like an atmosphere kind of sound and you can do some kind of quite crazy st stuff with it so um, so yeah so let's say if we just go from the start um, I haven't changed any settings yet. I've just it's playing from the start of the sample. If I hold down a key, you'll hear it's going to sound quite different. And you can see there's lots of little kind of like circles kind of moving from left to right. Um, and each one of those circles essentially represents one of the grains. Um, uh, now, on the right hand side of this sort of visualizer here, that's where we can actually set our kind of grain settings. Um, so as you can see, it says grain envelope. So, um, like, by default, it sets 250 milliseconds, which is quite long. Uh, as I decrease this, you're going to see it highlight a sort of uh, smaller and smaller part of the signal, of the sample. There we go. Until we get down to, like, a really, uh, you know, tiny grain size. It's just playing, like, a high-pitched tone almost, but we can make it longer as well. So now it's just sort of essentially almost like functioning in a way, almost like multiple samplers that are just kind of offset from each other and they're all just playing over the top of each other now. In terms of like the amount of grains, that is dictated by this uh, section down the bottom here. So I'm just going to turn it down to one so we can like really hear what's going on here. So essentially this means the amount of grains that are being played simultaneously and because we've got it set to one, there's only one playing at a time. So it's going to play through the entire length of our grain envelope uh, before it starts then playing the next grain. Um, uh, now we're working with a really long grain time here and that's normally not normally what you would end up doing, but I think it just helps to kind of visualize it. Now we can change our kind of fade in, for example. So if I pull this all the way over, then it's going to have a really gradual fade in. Um, and you can see the circle starts off small and then it gets bigger and then it kind of gets small again as it sort of fades down here. Similarly, we could we could also have it kind of start at full volume and fade out. Right, so um, 
So, you know, you've got a bit of a bit of control over the shaping there. Now, that is quite important because when you get to the point of having quite small grains, if they are uh, like just a sort of, uh, you know, zero millisecond start and a zero millisecond release um, or sort of decay, then like you're going to get a lot of like weird kind of artifacting and stuff going on. And you can kind of smooth it a little bit by messing with the fade in and the fade out kind of controls here, uh, which is really handy. Now, the other control that you have kind of in this top section is it allows you to essentially kind of like change the uh, the size of the envelope depending on the pitch of the key that you're playing. So that's related to this root here, but essentially it just means like as you play like higher pitches, it's going to make the envelope shorter. And as you play lower pitches, it's going to make the envelope longer, which can sound a little bit more like natural if you're trying to play like across the full range. But if you don't want that, you can kind of turn that off uh, as well. But it is on by default. And I think that's generally kind of probably where you're going to want it. Okay, so now we have a few extra controls over like what the grains are kind of doing here. So I'll just make this a bit longer again. Right, so we can change the amount of grains that are happening at once and, and you know, you can even go below one and then that means there's not always a grain playing when you have a key held down. But you can also go all the way up to 30 and you get stuff like this. And sort of like loads of it all layered together. Now, yeah, it does sound particularly cool when you're actually moving it and there are ways that we can kind of sort of modulate that uh, built into this uh, generator, which we'll look at in a second. Um, but yeah, you can create some very interesting kind of textures with that. And then uh, in terms of like how this kind of works, in terms of how it decides where, what, what grains to play when, you have a few different options. So density is kind of like what I've been talking about so far, where it's like how many grains do you want playing at once? So, you know, if you set it to one, then you've got one grain playing at once, for example. Sync, you can actually sync it to, uh, you know, your BPM of your of your project here. So if you wanted to do something that was quite kind of gridded and kind of rhythmical, like you can very easily do that. Uh, and then rate, you actually just set um, the, in Hertz, you're setting the rate. But, you know, it's important to kind of note that both on rate and sync, you're only getting one grain at a time, whereas in density, you can actually kind of like layer up um, more. Um, so I think that's why it kind of like, you know, defaults to that, because I guess that's slightly more of a classically like granular behavior in a way. Um, now, you can also change the like grain start position to be uh, bipolar or unipolar. So it essentially just says, is this uh, playhead the uh, sort of, you know, where everything starts playing for from, or is it like the sort of center point of your selection? Now that comes in handy when you start messing around with like the position and stuff a little bit more. So, so yeah, so you also then have like a browser where you can pick from various different kind of essentially samples that you can kind of load into it in very much the same way you can in the wavetable and sampler and, and everything else. Um, uh, and, you know, you have a sample editor that's the same as the editor in sampler as well. Uh, because again, like, you know, granular engine is just a kind of, a weird kind of sampler, basically. Um, you also have like the ability to um, make sure the grains are always starting in phase with each other. Um, so that can create a nice little bit of tonal change sometimes. And then you've got like a warm start, which essentially means like the grains are all always running in the background. And then when you like press a key, it just kind of like opens uh, like a like a gate. So it kind of means that rather than it always starting in the same place, it's just kind of running and then, you know, depending on when you press the key, the grains are going to be in a slightly different position. 
Um, so again, sometimes that can be quite handy, maybe especially if you're making like a like a like a sort of a texture or something where you don't need it to be like, or maybe don't even want it to be like the same every single time you press a key. Um, so that's just a couple of other like handy little options there as well. Um, now, uh, there's these sort of extra controls you can see at the bottom. Um, you know, some of which kind of reflect a little bit like these standardized generator controls but what they are is they're essentially like allowing you to add a bit of randomization into like certain parameters of the of the granular engine so you know a good one to start with for example if i just switch this back to unipolar mode and we go back to the start just to make it nice and easy to understand um you can set like a little bit of randomness in the position uh and now this is the the position across the entire sample right so Let's say if I turn this up to 100%, the grains are now going to start kind of each grain is going to like kind of like almost like roll a dice and start in a different position uh, throughout the sample here. But you can add just like a tiny bit as well and just create a little bit of variation so you don't get that kind of almost like glitched kind of sound that we were getting. So it's quite useful for like, you know, starting to turn this into a bit more of a texture because it doesn't like, if I turn this all the way down, we just get like a tone. But if I turn up the, uh, if I turn up the position ever so slightly, we get that little bit of like tonal change, which is quite nice. And it just means that you can sort of create like pads and things really easily. Um, Timing is going to just like mess with the timing of when these grains happen a little bit. So let's just turn this back down to like, I don't know, four ish. So you can hear with it off, I've, you know, I've reset position with it off. We're getting such a consistent restart like timing that like it, it starts to sound very like almost like a sort of like an error or something in a way and adding that little bit of timing variation suddenly it becomes looser and it sounds a bit more musical uh, pitch is adding a little bit of randomness to the pitch of the grains so if we turn this up to plus two semitones uh, but you know we could add just like a tiny bit almost sounds like a, I don't know, like an old tape recording or something where the pitch is just kind of wobbling around in a bit of a chaotic way. Um, level is the volume of each grain. So again, you can hear just even varying the level of those grains starts to make it feel a bit more natural already. Panning is the uh, sort of the panning of each grain. And then reverse is the percentage chance of a grain being played backwards. So if I turn out to 100%, it's going to play all of them backwards. You'll see them moving from right to left. But let's say if we stick it at like about 50%. We're getting half of them going forwards and half of them going backwards. So essentially what this allows you to do is to add some chaos into the way that the grains are played back and make it feel much more musical so let's say if we just mess with a bunch of these let's do level turn the panning up a little bit of reverse uh, all of a sudden we can have quite a lot of grains and it sounds quite good
So yeah, hugely powerful um, and and also very user friendly, which I think is something where a lot of granular stuff sometimes kind of falls down. Um, so it looks a little bit daunting to start with, but once you kind of understand the basics of what's kind of going on, it's very quick and easy to just kind of like mess around with this and get some kind of interesting results. Um, you know, we could turn this, the uh, the grain envelope length all the way down. With this randomness that we've added, it almost sounds like kind of, I mean, if you, if you remember before, it sounded like a tone, almost, when we put it this sort, this short. But if we add in a bit of randomness, all of a sudden it becomes more like noise. So, you know, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of like tonal flexibility you can kind of do there. Uh, now, it does also have this chord control on the right, uh, which allows you to essentially kind of like input, like create a chord essentially from a single key. Um, let's just set this up so that it sounds a bit better. Um, and you know, per it's sort of basically like depending on the chord that you pick, uh, it's essentially each grain is taking a different note of that that chord, um, and you can choose sort of like how many octaves it does um, from zero up to eight, uh, and then also kind of what order it kind of plays them in as well, like strum up, strum down, strum up and down, or like a randomly kind of selecting thing. <laughs> Now it sounds a bit crazy because we're like using something that's already chords, but um, but yeah, it just allows you to like try and lock your, um, you know, your granular um, sort of sound to like uh, more of like a musical kind of chord. Um, you know, especially given that like this pitch variation here is not really designed to do that. This is just designed to create a little bit of like kind of uh, chaos and instability in the pitch playback. But yeah, let's say if you wanted, we're like, okay, I'm, you know, I want like a you know, major chord or whatever um, to go with like the key of my project, uh, uh, then you can kind of get it to sort of like conform to that in a way, uh, add a little bit of extra musicality in. So again, it's just kind of like a nice little feature that just uh, allows a bit more like direct kind of musical access to what your grains are doing rather than it just being this kind of like abstract kind of shredding of a sample. Um, so yeah, so that kind of wraps up all the actual generator modules and now we should move on to talking about some of the other things that you can use in the generator area. <laughs>